Welcome everyone. Uh, this is a video uh, explaining how to make um, Tesla's pancake coil and use the um, very high efficiency to turn it into a heater. So we've seen this um, Tesla pancake coil that I had in, in the last couple of videos. Um, towards the end of this video you can see how that's wound but for now we'll just go into double checking the voltage um, of the battery and everything like that uh, I've got a couple of um, yeah, a, a small data sheet there that where I ran a test I think it was for approximately 24 hours worth uh, no okay 36 48 48 hours I don't know um, I can't remember anyway so uh, we've got a hundred amp hour battery um, down here we have a digital uh, temperature readout and that is of the uh, so that is the probe goes into the uh, pot filled up with sand and inside there we can see and, and i'll show you more detail at the end of the video um, is the heating element from my last couple of videos um, just submerged about four inches down into the sand and like i said before towards the end of the video you can see how that's wired up a bit of a closer detail it's a 7.6 liter uh, two gallon cooking pot it cost me like ten dollars so it's super super cheap um, and the whole system runs on around about 30 watts for this test uh, this uh, digital temperature controller uh, is prior to is opera connected prior to the watt meter and the reason for that is um, I want to be able to show that temperature um, whilst it's off okay so we can see there that there's no draw no wattage batteries at 14.29 uh, it's been at rest for a day and so this battery is a hundred amp hour and should last around about 45 hours um, based on on this data here that i've collected in my initial test so very very cheap to set up the wires just scrap wire that i had lying around it's actually internal house wiring um, the three different colors there and i stripped the outer um, insulation off and end up with these wires these wires are possibly a little bit stiff um, you can see that towards the end of this video in the construction section um, where I talk about using softer wires making it a bit easier for yourself so powered by I uh, believe it's like a, a 1 or a 200 watt ZVS okay so 18.5 volts centigrade is the starting temperature um, I put some PVC um, insulation tape around the seal of the pot just to uh, make sure that it's um, it's secure. Uh, sorry, and, and doesn't leak any heat there. Um, from the initial test, we we're getting uh, holding 90 degrees centigrade for a long time. So I'll see if one-handed. I still haven't purchased any switches, um, which is something I mean to do. Okay, so that's connected, and we have thirty point nine point yeah, or well, thirty one. 31.1 was the highest I saw there and temperature and it will oscillate like that 
uh, the entire time. So even though that um, that sensor is is about two or three inches away from the heating element, it seems to affect it immediately. Um, so that that's interesting. Battery voltage. 13.92 under load, drawing 2.18 amps. So I'll just leave that running now. And when it gets up to max temp, which should be around about the 90 degree mark, as long as I put that um, thermal probe in the same position. And then um, I'll uh, give a quick demonstration of, of the temperature probe and where it's at now. Um, my initial intentions for using this temperature controller probe um, is to connect it through the ZVS, Z, ZVS which will allow me to have a on and an off temperature so just a bit of a safety device if if any people are worried it's a very small wattage and so you could run that off of any solar panel even the cheapest, smaller solar panel you could find online, you could run it with this thing. And I would leave it running all the time, 24 hours a day, just converting solar into thermal energy. And so that, that just becomes a radiant heater with a 90 degrees internal temperature. The, the exterior becomes around about... Um, around about the 50 degree mark, 40 degree, 45 degree, I think I saw. Um, surface temperature of the sand got to 65 degrees. And now that I've put the lid on and sealed it, I, I can't do it. And that was the other reason for using, um, using this uh, digital probe so that I don't have to keep taking the lid off and affecting the data uh, results. So um yeah i mean it's 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 a nice warm heater just a passive heater sitting in the background um and uses very very little energy at all around about 30 watts constant and the coil and everything doesn't heat up um the zvs doesn't heat up it's only a little tiny cheap ten dollar one and but it serves a purpose so trying to make everything cheap um you know, and, and just show that it can be done. Uh, you can actually add a, my um, homemade capacitor into this circuit and you would just connect that um, there on the, on the two element outputs. Um, that's just a laminated capacitor. You know, it cost me virtually nothing to make that. So, um, and so what's the temperature already up to? 18.9 and so yeah it'll probably take according to this data sheet it takes around about uh well it takes a few hours for it to get up to temp so what's on this second day here uh 9 30 by 10 50 it was at 52 by 6 p.m it was at 90 so it, it achieved this 90 degrees somewhere between 10 50 a.m and 6 p.m that's a massive gap there but you know i've got a life and so i was living that and didn't get back to to uh, write down anything in between that time um all right on to the next next section Okay, that's been uh, 15 minutes. We've got to 21.9 degrees Celsius. Um, pulling 28.2 watts. And the battery's at 13.37 volts. Um, I'll write that stuff down again. I just wanted to add in my homemade capacitor. And that's it there. Um, I've only got one side connected and then we can, I can quickly show you the difference between um, the current draw when it's added and when it's not, not in the circuit. So that is connected 
right there probably shouldn't have that too close the iPad too close to that uh, coil because it is radiant energy it will be coming up a considerable distance off of that coil so just be careful with the electronics there um, so yeah capacitor so what are we without the capacitor we're 2.11 amps 28.3 watts add on the capacitor okay and now we're pulling 2.42 2.42 amps and 32.2 watts so and i find that that just that little bit of extra juice uh you know makes that heat up a lot faster also um you know this is not uh the right capacitor or it may not be the right capacitor and um if you really want to make this circuit more efficient you should investigate the resonant frequency and select the correct capacitor this is just one that i made and i'm just demonstrating here that if you need to do things on the cheap on a fly you can um, make up your own capacitor uh, with kitchen appliances and stationery so um, if you need information on that I, I suppose I could prepare a video for it but it's very very simple it's just a laminating sheet so an A4 laminating sheet and I cut aluminium sheets to be a similar size and you know even that was done crudely you can see right there they're not the same size but um and then just laminate and ran them through the normal laminating machine so that's a cheap homemade capacitor because i didn't want to buy one and that's how cheap i am all right so one hour and 15 minutes in and the temperature is now 40 let's just say 40 make it easy and power draw 2.33 amps 30.3 watts battery voltage 12.98 and i'll check it again in probably another hour and it should probably be close to its um, max temperature of 90 degrees okay see you soon so that's maximum temperature 102 degrees 103 degrees centigrade um, 2.25 amps battery voltage 12.7677 and uh, let's um, take in uh, it started at 9.45 it's now 11.45 so um, say 14 15 hours or so anyway that's our maximum temperature and it'll just stay now at that temperature and and draw 28 30 watts okay this is the uh, bifilar pancake coil that i've used in the heater um, so just measure this for those who want to replicate uh, 40.5 centimeters in width and it's by file and so you can see here where we'll leave that stay on the ground uh, you can see here where it comes into this junction we've got the two wires that that are the beginning of the coil so the red and the black coming into the center and basically to make these coils i made number one made the first coil 
and then I've traced around the outside of it um, so that I could reproduce it and the inside so that the inner diameter circle is the same uh, on all of the coils and then I just keep winding until I meet the outer perimeter um, line that I've drawn um, and so we have the two wires coming into the center which is the start of the coil they both travel around they're both side by side I have seen some people making Tesla pancake coils where uh, these two wires sit atop each other so one on top of the other according to the patent that's not how Tesla has done it I have made coils that way just out of curiosity to see if there was a reason why some people were doing it um, you know, until you actually do it yourself and then test it yourself you can't you can't or, or well I can't always trust um, someone's word you know if they say do it this way I think primarily the reason why the coils by far the pancake coils are made by some people with one wire atop the other is for convenience because I'll be straight up with you these are a pain in the ass to, to wind they are just so difficult and they take so long I have seen people make up jigs for them you know where it's it's compressed and it makes it all easy for them um, I don't have uh, the materials to go making myself one and when I can just uh, take some extra time and you know maybe watch a, a video or something um, that I don't have to specifically be watching directly I can just sit here and take my time and and wind those so I've just uh, wound you know say one circle and then use some super glue held it for 30 seconds wait for it to dry and and be contact and then keep winding these wires are relatively stiff so if I bend them they'll stay in that position um, it may be easier for you to use a, um, a softer wire softer copper wire to make those but that's the basis of it so um, we start in the center keep wrapping around until we get to that same perimeter obviously the first coil you decide how many turns you want um, you, you can investigate uh, the resonant frequencies and those sorts of things that you of the loads that you're trying to um, eventually power and that's generally how I make all of my coils I think of what's my intended purpose here and what's the easiest way to achieve it so that's that one um, into the junction here so when you come out of this coil at the end here we're now going to take one wire from the start and one wire from the end and they have to be opposites okay to make it a true bifiler and those are connected at the center point um, which you know on the um, ZVS that I'm using here and this is only a baby one a baby ZVS she's uh, I'm pretty sure it's something like a hundred watts or whatever um, it doesn't need to be you know one of those super expensive massive um, wattage ZVS to uh, achieve this heater at least and look I've run um, 500 watt incandescent or sorry 500 watt halogen uh, bulbs um and and it only seems to consume about 100 watts so um i i personally uh design all of these systems to match or come close to the output of light um that i would get from mains supply so all of my devices are usually an alternative to a main supply system because um, I'm trying to replicate that system off grid um, so again you can pick up one of those anywhere now this this can be powered by um, anything between 12 volts and 36 volts as it says there on the board and there's there's really you know next to nothing to it you know, three wire outputs you can get ZVS that have 
only two wire outputs. Uh, I've got some of those that I'll show in uh, another variation of my um, uh, wireless through earth transmission circuit. Um, but for this particular one, uh, it's best to use a three, a three line ZVS. Um, these are like 10 bucks. Um, the connector here I already had. Uh, which I purchased and they're only a couple of bucks that is a ceramic one I chose to use I wasn't sure if if this whole system was going to get hot so uh, it doesn't but just to be safe I thought I'd use a ceramic one and that's practically it the coil itself um, you can see this is where some of the glue seeped through and then I had initially had plastic down there uh, in an attempt to stop it getting on the board but um, they're, they're quite messily made, but you know, I don't want to spend too much time on making stuff look pretty before it's practical. Um, so that's that. Uh, if we move that, oh, I'll bring in the other coil. Oh, three coils. Uh, one, two, three, four coils. So this one on top is the same as this one. It's wound on the same template, wound on the same size, same length of cable, which is more important than size. Length of cable is critical in my research. There'll probably be others who disagree with that, but I think uh, prioritizing length of cable over size of coil is a more efficient way to go. It uh, gets closer to that harmonic resonance. Um, so the top one here is um, resonant with this one so it's the same now when it comes to these coils underneath they are single wire coils this bottom one here I ran out of um, red and then uh, moved into the black here um, the same gauge wire and then wound off that same template that base template that this one's wound off so for those who are interested there are many different ways that you can connect these together um, so basically it's the start of a coil uh, start of a coil being connected to the outer edge of the next coil um, in the case of the biofiler one it, it's pretty much exactly the same as as all the others it's start to finish start to finish start to finish um, so there's not really you know much to them um, and and as i said they're all the same size and they're just loosely nestled there for convenience so i can you can have it many different arrangements you can have this bifiler one which is resonant with this one on the bottom um, in this case, I think the last time I connected these up, I have obviously stuck it on the top. Uh, you could even flip that over and that would run that way too. Um, you can have the bifiler one in the middle. There are just so many different variations to this one. And being that it's truly wireless and we're talking powering a 500 watt load from these coils um, wirelessly. There's no connection between this coil and this coil that is a physical connection. It's all through inductance. So wirelessly transmitting uh, large volumes of power. As I said, I can run a, um, a kettle off of something like this, like a 2000 watt kettle. Um, and it, it just is a case of uh, having extra coils to increase the voltage and reduce the wattage um, so that's pretty straightforward that's how I make oops sorry that's how I make the coils and that's how they're connected uh, again trial and error just sort of you know put put number two coil or number three and whichever way you choose to experiment and and always take um, recordings like re record the results because you'll get down the track you know a couple of months in and you'll be like I'm pretty sure but you'll be wrong um, 
I'm pretty sure you'll forget something and and you'll mess it up so um, you know record the data record the voltage you get when it's in this arrangement change the arrangement record the voltage again record the amperage uh, all those things need to be done to have fair and, and valid um, test results so all right now we shall move on to the heating element itself now I went and purchased this pot um, specific for the experiment because I had to cut or drill um, through the side of this and uh, my wife would not have been happy with that so I purchased my own and it was only it was very very cheap it is it's not the best stainless steel like you put a magnet against it and it uh, it, it will stick to certain places uh, around the rim particularly and the handles uh, which makes me question I probably I've, I've wrapped this wire around the handle here just as it come out of the cut that I made I, I made the cut with the grinder because uh, I, I had trouble drilling through it so it is you know to some degree stainless steel but um, with a reasonably large iron content I um, yeah struggled with the drill so I just ended up cutting a nick in both sides uh, that's the other side there um, and then came out the side and just for security wrapped it around this handle here but I'm, I've been rethinking about changing that just because um, of the high iron content technically that could be like a, a semi toroidal uh, transformer shape I might put a um, a multimeter wire around that actually before I unwind it there just to uh, see if I can pick up any voltage that would be just interesting um, whilst it's under operation so uh, this is the heating element uh, that I had in uh, one or two videos ago um, just standing in a in a light holder um, and this would get to 360 degrees which is why I thought uh, you know, it's losing a lot of energy just radi radiating that into the air. So, uh, so if we put it in a in a sand battery, just a, a pot full of sand, then that energy can be stored and dissipate over uh, a longer period of time. It doesn't get to 360 degrees in here. I mean, the, the element still may get to that temp but it's being absorbed uh, surface temperature ends up being uh, 65 degrees uh, C that I've seen um, yeah so I think uh, so I've placed a probe in here um, which is about yeah two inches down and it's for a uh, temperature controller and basically uh, when this uh, probe reaches a certain temperature, which varies depending on where you position it. I didn't want to position it right next to the actual um, heating element, uh, but m more sort of halfway between and at a depth of about two inches. So I just place my finger up against it and uh, basically push it down until... Um, the sand reaches this line on my finger and then so that goes in there approximately two inches and then I just leave it there and I do all my tests and I don't move that and that's a uh, hot glued in here with with the um, red wire so uh, those were just soldered on you can see that one's clearly soldered on this one's soldered on as well because of their angle of this one it had a lot of strain on it so I just put this um, PVC tape around it uh, in an attempt to secure it there that's just like a self binding high temperature electrical tape or it can be used for water as well but um, these terminals uh, 
it's it's not like normal electricity i can touch that while it's operating it, it's not going to be a problem for me at all you will get a little tingle if you bridge both i don't recommend testing this because if you have an anomaly of some kind like say um you know there's a high moisture content in the air or you've got a high salt content in your body you could become the load um and so whilst they say like you can put your finger on that all day and it won't hurt you if those parameters change like just your salt content alone um not wearing shoes all sorts of things become variable so when people say oh you know it's safe to touch this special um technology of testers well yes and no uh you just gotta remind oh, look i have accidentally bridged these terminals and um whilst it's in operation and felt a little bit of um it, it wasn't like a normal electric shock it was like just oh that's just not really comfortable I, yeah so but you know putting your finger on on one term you can't actually feel anything well i can't um so but i don't recommend you try it <laughs> it's just those if one of those variables come into play then you you could be dead so uh, we don't do that um but that's just normal sand and the elements probably um about four inches down uh, is the maximum depth of that and then i filled up the um cuts that i made with the grinder um to allow me to put the lid on and then i just filled those those cuts with hot glue stuck the lid down so it has a nice tight fit I plugged the little hole here and again we're not getting to dangerous temperatures here so the meter shows uh, 90 degrees C um, and I ran it for like oh, I think one and a half days so maybe like 36 hours or something like that um, but yeah th that's everything that you saw in um, in the first section of this video um and then so the last thing is i've placed um this pvc tape that was around the bulb on the inside i just placed that around the perimeter here and it's like a self-binding tape so you just gotta stretch it a little bit and and uh, meet around the full 360 degrees with itself and it binds to itself so that just sort of seals the rest of that temperature in around this normal lid seal so it makes it pretty airtight and um, like i said it's just a nice radiant temperature uh, you can put your hands on it i found that nice and, and comforting uh, on a cold morning or a cold night um, just putting the hands on the side and i think the side temperature um yeah is, is around about the 40 40 degrees so but that's just a radiant thing that's going the whole time if it's in a it's only practical obviously for a small uh room but you know if um if that's all you've got is a small room and this could be safe and you know even inside like a tent or something and it would just give you enough heat and be particularly because of the efficiency of it that it'll go on 28 30 watts say let's say the top end 30 watts and um last you days and days uh, especially if you had a little solar panel like most solar panels are at least 100 watts so they're going to replace that in in no problem you know no time at all um even you know keep the solar panel technically should run it and then um and charge the battery as well with the excess and then you end up um, storing thermal solar energy all right thanks very much for watching much appreciated please like share and subscribe uh, i foolishly made some comments recently on other people's youtube channels um, about 
whether certain companies should be prosecuted for uh, denying us factual evidence which could have uh, prevented injury or death and I believe I may have been uh, slapped on the wrist for that so possibly shadow banned <laughs> to some degree um, yeah so please like share and subscribe otherwise I think uh, fewer people are getting to see my videos now according to the analytics so um, clearly a result of me questioning certain narratives okay thanks have a nice day